everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Certification. Today we are in the last tutorial of this particular series and we are looking at the sample questions from chapter 3. So the chapter, very first question from this chapter is what does the term test parameter refers to and illustrate situations for? So we have already learned about test parameter in one of our tutorials, so that should not be a problem, which was representing the upside down uh, transformation between the traditional and the agile approaches. The options here are the team's testing workload increases from sprint to sprint. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, not exactly the same which is related to the test parameter and we cannot make any comments on this particular point it can reduce as you're trying to integrate everything and it may increase of course which is correct as per the uh, you know agile methodology but nothing related to test parameter the backlog size and thus the number of tests decreases no it does not decrease it increases the number of automated unit tests is higher than the number of automated tests for higher test levels of course uh, we remember that the CI concept, the continuous integration, we do a lot of automated unit tests compared to integration and system. And that's where C would be the right option. But let's look at D, the number of automated tests in place increases from sprint to sprint. So not the workload, not the automated test, and it's automated tests are not specific to sprint, but the C seems to be very more relevant compared to the contact we have been through. So C is the right answer for this. Question number two, sometimes they can also ask you uh, the scenario based questions because this is not considered as foundation, this is considered as little advanced than the foundation and you have been through the foundation level examination so they may ask you a simple scenario based questions as well. As here, at the beginning of the fifth iteration of a project, a new requirement was introduced to support a new type of browser. The tester realizes that the existing test automation framework and the scripts will not support the new type of browser. What is the best course of action for the tester on this team to take? So here, there's a situation provided to you. You need to look at all the options carefully to come back to the question and then answer it correctly. <clears throat> Let's look at what we have. The tester should notify the team that they are planning on working extra hours throughout the next two sprints in order to update the existing test automation framework and scripts to support the new type of browser so as not to disturb the existing sprint plan. I think uh, increasing on the extra work hours is nowhere related to the methodology. So at the timeline stretch, these things are internal things and has nothing to do with the process specific. So can be ruled out, but let's look at the other options. The tester will notify the team of the issue a risk analysis is done and the team decides that regression testing must be performed on the new type of browser in addition to the sup other supported browsers. The tester will update the sprint plan by adding tasks to modify the framework and script to support the new type of browser. Uh, of course, there will be a risk analysis done and second, it is adding a plan, a task to the plan about updating the framework and scripts so seems to be most relevant option as of now as per the scenario. C, the tester does some research and concludes that the risk is low, that any new defect would be introduced in the new type of browser that have not already been found in the other supported browsers. The tester continues with the existing sprint plan and makes no changes to the tester. I think that's, that's contradictory, has no changes to automation and plus he cannot do the research and conclude a theory about risk. It is always a group activity and has to be consulted with the senior sources as well and the fellow team member. So C is completely contradictory statement. D, the tester will stop what they are doing, design specific test for compatibility testing of the new type of browser and communicate uh, with the team that any other testing work for the sprint will have to be pushed to the next iteration. Now I think we have a problem with the automation framework and scripts which is generalized and here it is D is talking specific to compatibility testing which has I think no relation between the scenario given to you and the option provided. So the most relevant option as of now is B and that's the exact thing. So this is how team you need to justify your answers that what is the relation between the scenario. There could be just one word which can change the entire meaning of the statement and could be ruled out completely. 
So not only the right answers, I'm also telling you the approach to handle the situations. Look at the next one, again a scenario based. Given the following user story, as the precedent, any data I upload should not be viewable by any other user of the system. During the first poker planning session, the following story points were given based on risk, effort, complexity, and proper extent of testing. Cons customers gave it 5, developers gave it 5, and testers gave it 20. What is the best outcome following this planning session? So we are talking about the estimations, how exactly it impacts, and these are the planning poker uh, technique where people have given different ratings, uh, where customers and developers are in sync, whereas testers have given 20. So what is the next thing you would like to do to overcome the situation or maybe, you know, what's, what's your next possible step? A, because the customers and developers size estimates match, the team can be confident that this estimate is good and should move on to the next user story. Now, generally testers have equal contribution, remember, we are talking about collaborative approach in Agile. So they have to discuss that why did the validation team or the testers thought that why it could take more number of time and effort required to do the job. So there could be possibly some reason which has to be discussed. The team should hold a conversation to understand why the tester felt this story was significantly more work. Another round of planning poker session should occur following that discussion. That's the real approach. Whenever uh, you get uh, insignificant uh, numbers or unsynchronized numbers you generally discuss and then you conduct the second round of the estimation where you try to sync with each other so uh, that could be the best approach or this is what the approach is all about so B seems to be right C because the customer owns the system in the end the customer estimate should be taken as the correct when there is a conflict uh, in that sense, uh, customers are just collaborative. Uh, they are only contributing to the process to make it more simple and easy for you to process the queries, but not uh, always correct. Uh, we, it, there's no such theory that the customer's inputs will be finalized uh, in terms of estimation because estimation is internal thing and we have to take care of it, that how we are going to process. The poker planning session should continue until all estimated story points are an exact match because cu between customer developers and testers uh, not exactly exact match we look for probable matches and uh, yeah not like infinite loop till we get uh, we are not playing a game where all three has to be you know exactly same without talking to each other so the exact thing what we are having is B here which is the most relevant answer which could be quite helpful for you Let's look at the next one. Which of the following are examples of the testable acceptance criteria for test-related activities? Here, you need to pick two options. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the presentation. Uh, generally, when you see five options, you will be asked, or it will be written there, that uh, so please select two options. Structure-based testing, white box testing, in addition to black box testing is used. System testing, at least 80% of functional regression tests are automated. Security testing, a threat risk analysis can is completed with no fault identified. Performance testing, the application is responding in a reasonable amount of time with 5000 users. Compatibility testing, the application is working on all major browsers. Now let's come back to the question once again. Which of the following are examples of testable acceptance criteria for test related activities? So if you see structure-based testing, white box and all, this is an approach. It's not an acceptance criteria. It is just an approach. Uh, look at B, system testing. At least 80% of functional regression are automated. This could be an acceptance criteria. Security testing, the threat risk scan is completed with no faults identified. Correct. The application is responding in a reasonable amount of time. Correct. Compatibility, application working on all major browsers, that's a requirement, not the acceptance criteria. So the right answer is B and C. So that's, uh, I think, quite simple and easy to understand. Let's look at the next one. Which of the following statement is false with respect to exploratory testing? Team, very be careful with the term like false, true, not. These are the tricks used to, you know, pull out your attention towards the negative way. 
So which of these following statement is false with respect to exploratory testing? Uh, we just learned about exploratory testing in few tutorials ago. Exploratory testing encompasses uh, concurrent learning, test design and execution. Exploratory testing eliminates the need for a tester to prepare test ideas prior to test execution. Best results are achieved when exploratory testing is combined with other strategies. Exploratory testers need to have a solid understanding of the system under test. Now, which one is false? Okay, now that's where you get confused and maybe probably you would try to pick up D or C which thinks that yes, this is the best thing which is exploratory testing all about. But if you see it is false, that means exactly true. Exploratory testing eliminates the need for tester to prepare test ideas be before the test execution. Of course, we would need all is the ideas that what kind of uh, test session we can conduct what observations we can look for and that is one of the point but this says false so the right answer is B. Let's take one more question because this is a big chapter uh, I'll be taking another question from the tool which of the following is one of the purposes of an application lifecycle management that is ALM tool which is a product of HP I'm sorry it was a product of HP now it is microfocus an ALM tool allows team to build up a knowledge base on the tools and techniques for development and testing activities. An ALM tool provides quick response about the build quality and details about the code changes. An ALM tool provides visibility into the current state of application, especially with the distributor teams. An ALM tool generates uh, and loads large volume of combination of data to use for testing. So I think it's uh, uh, clear from the tools of the test management the ALM tool generally provides you the uh, ongoing progress monitoring option dashboards which allows you to track uh, activities and ALM is a distributed tool uh, that means it is a centralized tool anybody can access it from any corner of the world so the most relevant option here is C which is the right answer whereas the others are not a feature of ALM so that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have any query about the syllabus or questions here, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you. And uh, it's just to tell you that this is the last tutorial of this series. All the very best for your examinations. Uh, do let me know your results, which will be quite uh, inspiring for me to see that how many I could help. And following that, we'll be coming up with another series of tutorials probably on the advanced level test analyst so make sure that you explore well understand well and keep learning team so thanks for watching the video and happy learning